Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us at New Hope Fellowship today. We're going to do some praise and worship. We thank you, Jesus, for a brand new day. We thank you, Jesus, for making the way. We thank you, Jesus. We rejoice today. We thank you, Jesus, Lord, have your way. We thank you, Jesus. It's a dawning of a brand new day. We thank you, Jesus. You're always making the way.
couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody great, nobody greater than you. I searched all over, I searched all over. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of all my praise. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There is no one else there like our Lord. No one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. for the living word yes, coming by Lord. way of the chief apostle Joseph Prude. Amen. Somebody give God some praise. Amen. All right. Give God praise. All right. Wow, that was good stuff, y'all. Jesus, Lord. You know something? We need to have a concert. Amen. For those of you watching live, we have 10 people here. Okay, so we're practicing social distancing. Um, obviously, a husband and wife can't social distance, amen? But everybody else has six foot, feet, six feet between them, all right? Come on, give God some praise, y'all. Amen. Amen. All right, you can be seated now. That was good stuff. Jesus, Lord, that was so good. Man, maybe we need to take a night and just do a concert. What do you think about that, Seth? Hmm? Just do a concert. Encourage the people during the, this temporary pause that we have. Amen? You know, I was talking to the Lord about what to share, and he gave me an old message I preached a long time ago. It just came up in my spirit, and <clears throat> I looked it up. I think it's appropriate. I think what is important for us to grasp is what do we do with this time that we have? Say amen, somebody. You can take this time and be productive. You can take this time and throw it away. It's up to you. What are you going to do with this time? God's given us a selah, a Sabbath, a pause, just a moment. Because this is going to be over. This is not permanent. We're not going to live like this forever. Amen? God told us on the prayer line to proclaim that it is over. Amen. Now, just because you make a declaration today doesn't mean it happens tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. But it's so in the spirit. Yeah. So our declaration is, this is over. Yeah. Say amen, somebody. Yeah. And so, you know, God's been speaking to my heart on a personal level. I don't know what he's saying to you. About use this time to be face to face. Say amen, somebody. Use this time to explore God. Spend some more time with him. Say amen, somebody. Get a new set of marching orders. And, and he gave me a verse, and I preached this verse a long time ago, but this verse is just, it's so ironic. You've got to catch this verse to see what it means. So let's look at Psalms chapter 84, verse 2 and 3. David says, my soul longs even faints for the courts of the Lord. And my heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. Listen to verse 3. Yea, the sparrow hath found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Father, bless this word. Listen to this. This is a contradiction. Let me ask you, what do you know about the altar in ancient Israel in the temple? Several things that were 
peculiar to the altar. The altar could never go out, had an eternal flame. There was a routine time that they were set to offer sacrifices. So the altar was always extremely hot, burning and flaming. The altar was clean. The Levites had a routine assignment to keep the house of God clean. So if that be the case, how could it be that a sparrow could build a nest on the altar when the altar was always supposed to be hot? This is a contradiction here. There's a prophetic secret here. We go back and see in verse 2. My soul longs. In other words, David said, there's something missing. Mm. You ever have a time when you didn't pray for a long period of time? What did you feel? Your soul began to long. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hadn't read your word in a while? What happens? Your soul began to say, I miss the presence of God. I mean, he said, my soul, lo my, he said, it even faints. Prayerlessness makes you faint. Somebody say, no prayer, no strength. <laughs> I have seen men of God start out with great ministries. And when they got successful, they stopped praying. It was just a matter of time before they fell. And they fell because they couldn't control their flesh. Ministry will tempt you because the Bible says, I'm trying to quote the verse, it says, as fire is to gold, even so is a man to his praise. When you're in ministry and there's an anointing on you, here's what's going to happen. People are going to praise you. Oh, you sang that song. Ooh. And the sister's going to say, you sang that song. You look good, too. <laughs> I like that suit. That's how it works. Come on, say amen, somebody. Man, you preach that. And if you ain't prayed for a while, you got no regulators. Ooh, let me try it. You ain't got no regulator inside of you. And your flesh going... Yes, I did. <laughs> I sure did. Come on, say amen, somebody. So David said, it faints for the courts of God. In other words, David saying, I ain't been praying. I have not spent time with God. I got so rich as a king, I've been counting my money, <laughs> going to bed with my maidens and my concubines, say amen, somebody. One or two of them every night. Come on, say amen, somebody. Counting my horses and riding in my chariots. Yeah. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. <laughs> but something in me is crying out for the living God. And then he gets very poetic. You got to catch this. The sparrow hath found a house. And the swallow a nest where a sub where she may lay her young. Even thine altars. Which means the reason the bird could sit on the altar is the altar was cold. The altar was not being used. And what is the prophetic symbolism of a bird? Demons. <laughs> so when you don't pray, demons build a nest. Uh, in you. <laughs> Say this with me. A made-up mind, made up mind is, not is not enough. The old saints who say have a made-up mind. Made-up mind ain't enough. That's called mental assent. That means I can do this with my mental strength. I can only do it. Jesus, I'm the vine. You the branch. Ah, except you abide in me. You cannot bring. You can't be humble. 
You can't be holy. You can't love. Say amen, somebody. And when you don't pray, you can't pray. Try it again. When you don't pray, you can't pray. The longer you don't pray, the harder it is to pray. Say amen, somebody. When you stop giving, it's harder to start giving. Say amen, somebody. I don't know about you, but I'm afraid to fall. You know why? Because I know it's going to take me a long time to get back. So if I know if I taste the fruit of the vine, I'm going to be convicted, but I'm going to stay there for a while until God goes smack. I don't know how long I'll be out there. So guess what? I don't want to be out there because I, I know my flesh. I know about your flesh. Say amen. So I know what your flesh will but I know what my flesh will do. Talk to me in the house. So the bird and the swallow have built a nest on the altar. That's you. Get up in the morning, brush your teeth, read the daily bread, and run out. That ain't praying. Say amen, somebody. That's not praying. No, no. That's not spending time with God. We got all this extra time. What you gonna do with it? You gonna let birds build a nest of evil thoughts, anger, lust, pride, sitting on your altar because your altar's cold. Next thing you know, your thoughts don't went crazy. You get in depression. You remember way back when I was 12, my, my dad didn't buy me that bike. That one went in your head. Come on, say amen, somebody. Come on, you're looking at a man or woman that would never be attractive to you. Say amen, somebody. You're flipping through the channels and you stop at something you would never stop at. Because mm -hmm. your inner man has dried up. Birds. don't fast. Ah. Here's one thing I know as a leader. When you call a fast, 50% of people ain't going on it. No, they won't. And they find a spiritualization not to do it. God told me to do something else. But you will see it in their personality Amen. that they have no self-control. The only thing that brings you under control is the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. Not say, I will be good. That ain't going to work. Make a New Year's resolution, see how long you're going to keep it. Right. I ain't going to say nothing to nobody and the more you know it, your flesh say, I ain't in agreement with you. Say amen, somebody. Your flesh say, I'm still Adam. Your spirit say what your flesh saying, I ain't saved. Am I helping you? Somebody say birds. birds. Sitting on the altar. All kind of thoughts. Impulses. Stuff that you had thought you were delivered from. Starts to knock on your door. So I ain't thought about nothing like that in a long time. You never drank, but you smell liquor. You ever had that happen? <laughs> I've had it. I never was a drinker. At a time, I could smell. I said, why am I smelling liquor? Why? Smelling the aroma of it. Devil trying to romance you. Because you ain't prayed. The Bible said a man's spirit will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? When your spirit is strong, your inner man says, no. I ain't even thinking about that. I ain't got no appetite for that. Don't, you can walk through, you can't say that word. <laughs> you can walk through some stuff. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> Let me put it this way. You can walk through a brothel. I would say another word. Say amen, somebody, and it wouldn't bother you. Come on, say amen, somebody. They can be naked right in front of you, but when your spirit man is where it needs to be, like, <laughs> I ain't steading that. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> somebody say birds sitting on the altar. What a contradiction. How can birds sit on a hot, burning altar, which is you? It's because the fire has gone out. Now, in the black church, we don't know what fire is. We think fire means noise. The louder it is, the more God it is. I've been in places, they tell me, this church is on fire. 
So I went there, and all they did is they jumped and screamed louder than everybody else. No tongues, no interpretation, no miracles, no signs, no wonders, no prophecy. That ain't fire. Say amen, somebody talk to me. Jumping up and down is not fire. You can be, ah, oh, I, I remember this when I, when I, was, I was just saved, probably about safe for about two years. And me and a friend of mine named Larry Cecily, they brought us here to Cleveland, and they put us out on the street on Huff Avenue and told us, find a drug addict. Now, you know, so we're from New York City. So we walk right past the drug addicts because they didn't look like the drug addicts we knew from New York. We call back up and say, we thought y'all was taking us to the bad neighborhood. These people got houses and cars. We knew what the Bronx looked like and Manhattan looked like. Say amen, somebody. And so we went to this little church. Never forget this. Me, me and Larry, we just excited. We go to this little church, and we saw this brother in there. He was dancing all over the place. And we was young enough to think that dancing represents spirituality. So we thought he was deep because he was dancing. All oh, this boy was just dancing all over the place. And we were looking at him like, oh, that brother on fire. That's what we thought fire was. And so we went out after that, me and Larry, we young, we on fire for God. And so we go out and we witnessing in the street, right? And we witnessing and we get this alcoholic saved. And we see the dancing brother come. We go, ooh, ooh, he coming, he coming, he coming. This powerful man of God coming. We knew he going to come help us with this alcoholic. When he came by, we said, hey, brother, he ignored us and walked right on past us. Amen. Because all he had was Pentecostalism. Say amen. Oh, I met some, somebody just clicked off on me. Somebody just clicked off on me. Say amen. Son. All he had was a whole bunch of Pentecostalism. Say amen, somebody. He didn't have no fire. He had strange fire. Strange fire is the activity of the soul. Because the soul imitates the spirit. Uh -huh. Let me ask you this. When you weren't saved and you went to the club, did you ever feel chill bumps? Yes, you did. So, I mean, chill bumps ain't God. Huh? When you went to the club, did your feet start moving? So, that means your feet moving ain't necessarily God. You ever heard a song made you emotional? So, that means emotion ain't God. <laughs> David said this, my soul waiteth only upon the Lord. What do you say? I train my soul. I train my soul so that no outward stimulation moves me. You can play the Hammond B3. Okay. You can say all the black Christian cliches. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's a lawyer. He's a doctor. But see, when, yeah, am, am I helping somebody? But when your soul is full of the presence of God, it don't respond to that. Am I helping somebody? Yeah, I just heard this. I heard God say this. Everybody say, this is over. Say, so we don't see it, but it's over. It may not look like it, but it's not over. But it's over. Not very long from now, here's what I heard God say. Not very long from now, God said, I'm going to pour rain on the land. And everything that's dry is coming back up again. I want to encourage pastors. Right now, pastors are receiving criticism. People are saying stupid stuff, like God is teaching people to be in love with him and not with the church. Wait a minute, the church is his body. You can't separate the two. Man of God, I know you're in faith. You got a building, you got mortgage, you got lights, you got gas, you got rent. You don't live in the building. It's for the kingdom. And there are the critics out there, the anti-church critics who are criticizing you. But let me tell you something. God's for you. We're going to make it through this together. Come on, shout somebody and give God some praise. We're going to make it through this together. Somebody say birds on the altar. No prayer. No prayer. Listen to Genesis 15, 7 to 11. <laughs> and he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of Chaldea to give thee land to inherit. He said, O Lord, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? He said to him, Take a heifer 
of three years old and a she-goat of three years old and a ram of three years and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each one against one another. But the blackbirds he divided not. Listen to verse 11. So this is meat that's been cut. Stanking, because we don't know how long God came, took the cup. So this is stanking flesh. What happened when the stanking flesh was there? The birds came. Let me try that again. Birds like stinky flesh. Woo! Birds like stinky flesh. Demon spirits love when you don't spend time with God. Because now they can whisper in your ear. They can tell you don't spend time with God. And they tell you you okay even though you don't spend time with God. Stinking flesh brings Demons, spirits. Let me tell you, let me give you some examples of what spirits will make you do. They'll make you complain. They'll make you depressed. They'll make you angry. They'll make you argumentative. Say amen, somebody. All that is a result of no praying. They'll make you religious. They'll make you self-righteous. They'll make you judgmental. (laughs) Birds came on the flesh. Any birds on your flesh? Is your altar cold? Ooh, somebody getting this. Now, now watch this. We've often heard the old term, you, you can't prevent a bird from flying over your head but you can prevent it from building a nest. We all battle with thoughts. You don't just have to dwell on the thought. The first verse indicates that you're in such a bad position that the bird can build a nest. Let me give you another word for the nest. It's called a stronghold. Huh? That means them demons have found a place to rest in your life. And guess what they do when they rest? More birds come. Hello, say amen, somebody. Now, as a Christian, you cannot be demon-possessed, but you can be demon-oppressed and obsessed. You know what an obsession is? It's a thought that's irrational that you can't get over. You're absolutely convinced that somebody don't like you and they ain't thinking about you. They don't like me. They don't like me. You're obsessed. Or you believe that somebody loves you that ain't thinking about you. God told me that's my wife. Yeah. Told me that's my husband. And you're obsessed. Yeah. You know why? Because your altar is cold. And birds have sat on a, and built a nest there and they have multiplied. They have hatched eggs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Isaiah calls it the egg of the cockatrice. You know what the egg represents? Demonic thoughts. Birds sitting on the altar because your altar's cold. When your altar's hot, birds can't sit there. I'm going to tell you something. When you prayed up, you dangerous. The devil hates you. He despises you. Am I helping somebody today? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 26. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the... I love how precise the Bible is here. Because the word spirit is capitalized, which means the Holy Spirit. I have to walk in the Holy Spirit. Why? For the flesh 
lust against the spirit. Your flesh don't want to do right, neither does mine. I love Hebrew because it, it's so descriptive, and it's three different Hebrew words for man. One is Adam, which means the man of a low estate. Ish means a man of a high estate. Enosh means all men. Uh huh. So God's trying to move you and I from Adam to Ish. <laughs> Only way you move from Adam to Ish is in the closet. How many grew up with low self-esteem? I did. But guess what? The prayer closet fixed me. Oh, yes, it did. Say amen, somebody. The prayer closet fixed me. Shout somebody in the house. It's something about the prayer closet. How many have had this kind of internal knowing when something ain't right? It's your prayer closet. I read stuff on Facebook sometimes. I say, these niggas are just crazy. <laughs> and you know how I know they're crazy? I know they don't pray. Because if you prayed, you wouldn't believe. Y'all about to get me off on a tangent. I'm going to give up my guts. <laughs> All these crazy niggas with this coronavirus coming out of 5G, they couldn't possibly pray. Because <laughs> the spirit of truth in your inner man will let you know, boom. <laughs> That don't make no sense. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> well, so birds is on your altar. Guess what kind of birds? Pride. Know everything bird. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. Them dangerous spirits. Dangerous spirits. Say amen, somebody. One of the most dangerous spirits it, there is is the unteachable spirit. Nobody can tell you nothing because you know everything. Birds. Sitting on your altar, whispering and chirping in your ear. Ain't no preacher right but you. <laughs> Whatever you read in the Bible, that's what it means. Ain't nobody know what it means but you. You don't have to submit to nobody because you're special. That's them birds. <laughs> whispering in your ear, say amen, somebody. But if your altar was hot, shout somebody. If your altar was hot, shout somebody. If your altar was hot, them birds, shout somebody. Couldn't sit on your altar. Ooh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. So when your flesh is operating, you can't even do right when you know it's right. But if you're led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now listen to verse 19. Now in the works of the flesh, let's call them birds, a manifest. So there's a spirit called adultery. Oh, 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 oh. Adultery does not only mean to have sex with someone out of marriage. Adultery means... You can spiritually adulterate by having sex with doctrines of devils. Hello, somebody. When the Lord called Israel an adulterer, a whole nation wasn't running around having sex. They were in love with demon gods. Oh, oh let me cut this baby. Let me cut this baby. When the Bible says that a man or woman cannot be divorced except for the cause of adultery, it doesn't just mean that they had sex with somebody. That means if your husband is in love with the world, ooh, 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 he's committed adultery. Ooh, I know some of y'all religious folks going to get mad at me. <laughs> Fornication, uncleanness, all these are birds. All this stuff comes in your life when you don't pray. Lasciviousness, that means sex to the point you can't be satisfied. You need to have it, have it hanging from the wall, upside down, three-way, four-way, everything. It's lasciviousness. Come on, say amen, somebody. Birds. 
Adultery. Witchcraft. Witchcraft is a control spirit. Am I helping somebody? You know, I wrote a book called The Witch Hunt. I'm going to put it out very soon. It should probably be out in about two weeks. We deal with artificial witchcraft. Sometimes we're so busy worrying about people working incantations and spells that we miss the people with control spirits. <laughs> and religious spirits and manipulation spirits. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. I've had people come to my church that had some witchcraft specialists. Oh, my God. They had a ring in their nose. That's the devil. One lady had a bracelet around her leg. Demons. We even had a movie night. And we had a, we had a Spider-Man post up there. A lady told us, the devil. So I guess the devil jumped out the ink <laughs> and the paper and ran around the church. Come on, say amen, somebody. I'm off on a rabbit trail. <laughs> Variants, emulations, wrath, evil, seditions, heresies. All this is birds. E envyings. <laughs> Anybody had a season, let's get real, that you, you wasn't praying like you should? Amen. What happened? All these things in variated forms began to manifest in you. Yeah. These are the birds. Am I helping somebody? Ah, let me move on. Jeremiah 2.32. Two thirty-two. I love this verse. Can a maid forget her ornaments? In other words, can you imagine a young sister, 17-year-old, ain't got her jewelry, ain't got her makeup, ain't got nothing. That's just an oxymoron. That ain't going to happen, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Not a black sister. Say amen. <laughs> I was driving down Euclid about three weeks ago. I guess they closed them up now. The beauty supply place? They had a line out there. I don't care about no corona. I got to get my hair did. Come on, say. <laughs> so can a maid forget her ornaments or bride her attire? In other words, could you imagine a bride coming to the wedding and ain't got no wedding dress? He said, yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Day after day, week after week, you don't pray. Spend no time with God. TV. I don't understand when people say they're binging on a program. I can't binge on something like that. Say amen, somebody. Now, I don't, I'm not saying I don't watch TV and watch a movie. I certainly do. But when, when I sit there and watch one program, 10 different episodes, my spirit man said, whoa, 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 hold up. Hold up. Come on, talk to me. If you can't say amen, say oh me. My people forgot me days without number. You go days and weeks and you don't have no time with God. But yet you call yourself spiritual. You'll come and you'll dance all over the place. Say, man, jump up and dance. Da, 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 da. No, no, that's religious activity. <sighs> Something God taught me a long time ago and I thank him. I never forgot it. I've never been dumb. I'm pretty smart. Not as smart as I used to be, but I'm smart. I've always been articulate. But I learned a long time ago. I don't want to minister out my talent. Because watch this. Here's a safe place I've learned. My apostle told me this years ago. You'll never have a successful enemy. What does he mean by that? If your life is in Christ and you're established in who he made you, you'll never have a successful enemy. But if you're operating out of your gift, somebody more gifted than you. If you know because you're a great speaker, somebody going to speak better than you. If you're good looking, somebody looks better than you. If you're fine, somebody find it than you. Say amen, somebody. And guess what? Fine wear off and good looking wear off. Say amen, somebody. The anointing. Say amen, somebody. And the anointing only comes in his face. Ah, God. The most valuable thing you have is your time with God. Never let anything come between you and your time with God. 
whatever price that you got to pay to spend time, pay the price. It is the greatest price that you'll ever pay or not pay. Because your life tomorrow is the child of this day. Are you hearing me? Whatever praying and seeking you don't do today is your lack for next time. War and fight for your prayer time.